Hello everyone, welcome to The Mudroom, our weekly free Uncommon Sense Parenting class. How is everyone today? I hope your kids are settling well into school. I hope you're starting to find your groove and routine again. I am really enjoying the freedom. <laughs> I have gotten so much done over the last couple of weeks. It's been absolutely fantastic. All good things. Something that is coming up quite a bit over the last two weeks though, is that a lot of kids have kind of forgotten how to be functioning human beings in public. They're struggling with some of the skills necessary to function in a classroom because they haven't been in care or at school for a really long time. So today I wanted to talk about some skills you might want to brush up on with your kiddo. And before we jump into that, allow me to introduce myself to those of you who are new around here. My name is Alana Robinson and I'm a parenting coach for parents of toddlers, preschoolers, and kindergartners. I am your host here on The Mudroom. I'm also the host of the Parenting Posse Facebook group and I'm the creator of the Parentability Program where I help you raise well-behaved kids of your own. If you're here, say hi, let me know how you're doing. Don't be shy, drop comments and questions as we go along and I will happily answer them. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss another class. All right, so our poor pandemic kiddos are having a bit of a rough go. <laughs> I think we all expected this. It's been at least 18 months since a lot of our kids have had semi-normal school or care experiences, and it's still not really normal. Most places still have mask mandates. They're still structuring days to reduce the amount of interactions kids have, and just so much more. It's a lot to adjust to. And since most of them got used to more of a home schedule, it's taken a little bit for them to get there. The main skill that I'm hearing from parents about is turn taking because they've been at home. And even when they were in in-person classes, they couldn't share stuff. They were all using separate supplies and obviously at home, there was at best siblings to have to negotiate supplies with which is a very different dynamic. So now that they're in class and they're having to negotiate toys and resources with other kids who haven't been taught the same rules, there's some conflict brewing. The best way to address this with young kids is to role play and give them some scripts to use when they find themselves in a conflict. Remember, when emotions are running high, words get hard, they lose access to them. So by giving them pre-made scripts that they can pull out and giving them practice using them, it makes it a little bit easier. Now, when I say scripts, I mean like, excuse me, I'm using this right now. I'll give it to you when I'm done. Or, hey, I'd like to use that. Can I have it when you're done? After you, it's Ava's turn. And then it's my turn. Give them the words and practice using them. <laughs> it's not enough to tell them what they should say. Practice makes perfect. And if you really want to kick it up a notch, write it into a story for them. Stories make it so much easier for our kids to process and retain information. They're amazing teaching tools. So if you find your young child is struggling to remember boundaries or scripts or strategies, write a story about it and read it to them often. That repetition is really important. The next skill that I'm hearing parents complain about is waiting. Standing in line, waiting your turn, being patient for things that they want as they work their way around the circle. Now listen, this is a skill that pretty much every child on the face of the planet struggles with <laughs> pretty regularly. Impulse control, which is one of the eight executive functioning skills we talk about so much in parentability, only starts to develop around the age of two, and it doesn't finish till around the age of 25 to 28. So your three to four to five year old is like barely into it. It's a new skill on the whole. What's making it harder right now is that they didn't have many opportunities to practice using it over the last year and a half. And these skills only develop when we use them and practice them. 
They're use it or lose it. So you guessed it, practice, practice, practice. There are so many opportunities to practice these skills at home. Even something as simple as giving them food that's just a little bit too hot, so they have to stop themselves from immediately shoving it in their mouth. That's impulse control. Practice waiting. Practice waiting while everyone else gets something before they do. That's impulse control. Impulse control is one of the skills that we spend a ton of time on in parentability because it really shows up almost everywhere and it can cause a lot of problems. So practice, 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 and expect that they're going to fail. So many parents will say, we've done this like 10 times and they still can't do it competently. No, <laughs> no, they need to practice it literally thousands of times to become competent at it. So keep practicing, keep at it, don't let it drop. And last but certainly not least, I'm hearing from a lot of parents that their kids are struggling to use a military term, a sense of urgency. <laughs> They're slow. <laughs> because again, if you've been home for the last 18 months with nowhere really to go, I mean, I think it's fair to say the world as a whole has lost our sense of urgency. But now that we do have places to be and things to do, we're kind of picking up where we left off, but they have no memory of the before times. 18 months is a long time for a two to six year old. They genuinely don't remember that faster pace of life. So they can't just flip a switch and go back to it. To Excuse me, to combat this, I really recommend making time as concrete as possible but also just anticipate the transitions are going to take a little longer and plan for that. The time timer is one of my favorite ways to make time concrete. It's a visual timer, I've got one right here. I've talked about this thing tons before if you want to learn more. But other simple ways to make time concrete is to like use the length of a familiar song. Whenever that song is sung, then, or whether you play it on your phone or through a smart speaker, like that's why cleanup songs are so popular, right? Because children understand that there's a length to the song, they become familiar with how long that song takes. And so when you pair it with non-preferred activities, it makes it a lot easier to judge how much time they have to do something. Sand timers are a great way and you can find them everywhere. I've actually got one right here too. This is just a plastic one. I think this one is 45 minutes, yeah. And there are apps for visual timers. Like the Time Timer has an app. There's lots of other ones. Some of them make fun sounds when they're done. There's all sorts of options for making time concrete. So use your tools. What else are your kids struggling with with back to school or daycare? I'd love for you to tell me in the comments or come find me in the Parenting Posse and we can talk about it over there. Don't hesitate to tag me. This is a difficult transition for everyone and we need to normalize that and problem solve through that. Every parent seems to be under the impression that their child is the only one with a certain problem. Mine's the only one that won't stand in line. Mine's the only one who can't get their shoes on. Mine's the only one who doesn't listen at circle time, whatever. I guarantee you that they aren't. And I also guarantee you that the problem has a solution, right? So let's problem solve. That's it for today. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you next time for another Uncommon Sense Parenting class. Bye.